don't miss any content, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Hey guys, welcome back to Sahara Football. It's another fine morning here. We're going to talk more football news. I have some interesting news for you. Many I'll be focusing on Accra Hatuko versus Kotoko. Some fans were rascals in that match and they destroyed some seats in the stadium. Now authorities of the National Sports Authority are saying that those fans should pay that amount and if they don't, they will not allow them ever to use their facilities again. And also we will touch on Kwesi Yantichi's issue. His ban will end this 8th September, that's this weekend. And what next for him? Will FIFA call him back? We'll know all that in today's story. So if you are new to the channel, be sure to click the subscribe button and click the notification bell beside the subscribe button. And open an account with one expert. The affiliate link is in the description. So I'll get right down to it. We'll kick off with the um on Sunday Accra to Folk played with Masia Sante Kotoko. And apparently some fans were not happy about the results, especially the Hearts of Folk fans. So they went on to vandalize some of the seats in the stadium and it didn't sit well with the authorities there. So the story says Pay for broken chairs or no more stadia use, National Sports Authority tells Kotoko and Hearts of Folk. He said the National Sports Authority has ordered both Asante Kotoko and Hearts of Folk to bear the cost of replacing broken chairs at their stadium, else they will not be giving access to any of the nation's football grounds in the future. The directive came on Monday after supporters of the Accra Hearts of Folk destroyed 271 seats at the Babayara Sports Stadium following Sunday's friendly game with rivals Kumase Asante Kotoko. The General Director of the National Sports Authority, Majid Bawa, told City News, I think, he, this is what he said, his statements exactly. He said, I'm asking the Ashanti Regional Director to give me a report of what happened. Based on the report, we will meet the teams and charge them with the replacement of destroyed seats. These stadiums are properties of the state and they are not owned by Hearts or Kotoko. They must be maintained, and that is our responsibility. It is high time we make people responsible for their actions. And for Hearts and Kotoko, their failure to pay means they will not give out any of our facilities to them to use ever again. So Hearts clashed with the Hearts of Hope fans, clashed with the military towards the end of the game after being angered by a supposed penalty call that was not given by the referee. The fans ripped chairs and hauled them onto the pitch in protest, leaving the NSA to count its costs. The cost of fixing a seat, according to the NSA, is 110 Ghana cities. So in total, Hearts and Kotoko destroyed a total of uh, chairs totaling 30,250 Ghana cities. The two clubs have, have been surcharged with their amount since their decision to play the match drive the fans to the ground in the first place. And no news. In 2015, over 4,000 seats in the stadium were broken down by the state by students from senior high schools in the Ashanti region during an inter-school athletics competition. They were subsequently surcharged by the NSA, but the seats have not yet have yet to be fixed. So that's it. I don't see why you should be breaking the chairs because you are angry with the decision of the referee, and I don't see why you should do that. It's just a friendly. This wasn't even a competitive game, despite it being called a Super 2 clash and all the hype around it. We missed football and it was something to revive the football in this country. It was something to raise fans for a foundation. This was a worthy cause. I don't see why the fans should be angry about this, why they had to destroy these chairs. Now we have to pay for these chairs. The people have to pay for these chairs and the cost is going to be is, is quite huge, 30,000 over 30,000 Ghana cities. I don't see why the fans should do this. Whoever is responsible should pay the money. I think they will charge the, the both teams will be charged, whether it will be evenly charged or whatever. And let's move on. And fans should should stop doing this. It's just a game. Please, it's just a game. It's nothing you should take so personal. That's my opinion there, so I'll move to my next story. I hope this gets resolved quickly so that we can get things back to normal. Our football is way behind already and we don't need more controversies piling onto it. Now they are threatening not to give the teams the stadium to use and that won't be good for all of us in the end. So now moving on to my next story, we all know the Ghana Football Association was um, was closed. I think the workers were asked to leave but 
The government has finally paid the June salaries for the Ghana football officials. June. They have not been paying their June salaries. I don't know how they survived up to this point. They've been paid their June salaries. And this is the story. He said, I can confirm that the salaries of the GFA staff for the month of June has been, has been paid. That's Elvis AJ Bar. The public relations officer of the sports ministry, Elvis AJ Bar, has confirmed that the salaries of the workers of the um, Ghana Football Association have been paid for June, and those of July are being worked on, he added. The government froze the accounts of the football governing body in an attempt to close it down. And right now they have they have they have paid them June. July is being worked on, so hopefully they get their monies and can take care of their families. So now we move on to the AFCON 2019 and our opponent Kenya. Kenya coach is set to drop 20 players. He initially called a 38-man squad. So in, in fact, he's using 18 players, only 18 players. So Kenya coach Sebastian Mengi, his picture is on the screen right now, must evict 20 players from his provisional 38-man squad for the nation's qualifier. Though we're playing Ghana, we're playing Ghana in Nairobi. And already the Black Stars players have set up camp in, and today they'll start training around 3 p.m. And they've set up camp in, um, in Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, and Thursday morning they will move to Nairobi and get accustomed to the environment for the game. So I move on to question 90 Sorry, now 90 ban expires this week. What does that mean? So let's listen to the story. The story says the decision by the World Football Governing Body to ban question Yantichi of the Ghana Football Association from all football related activities will expire this week. The former industrial football administrator had his 13 year period leadership of the GFA truncated by the FIFA with a ban following allegations of the allegations of breaching the code of ethics for the football governing body. Now the decision ethics committee of FIFA restricted the former official FIFA council member from all football activities for a period of 90 days which started on June 8th 2018. The 90 day period expires on June uh, on September 8th, that's on Saturday, to make way for FIFA's final decision on the former CAF first five president. FIFA indicated in a statement issued on 8 June that the period of the ban could be extended by another 45 days if they were unsatisfied with the findings of the investigation. But sources close to the world governing body has hinted that they are satisfied with the findings and final decision should be expected soon. The ban on Yantichi was announced two days after an investigative documentary by Anas. And right now, we will know Nyantichi's faith by Saturday, 8 September. It will be known on Saturday whether Nyantichi, who is the owner of Ghana Premier League side, Wow All Stars, and an adorned football administrator with much experience in the industry, will be permitted to return to football by FIFA or not. So, fingers crossed, Saturday we will know the verdict. And you will see where that goes. Now, my final story is about another man who was implicated in the Ghana football issue, Sunny Dara. He has moved from Ghana Football Association to Xylophone Media. So, Sunny Dara is one of the casualties of the Anas number 12 explosion, which rocked the nation. And this is what he said He said, when one door slams, another opens. The doors of GFA were slammed in the face of Mr. Dara, one for the doors and only for the doors of Xylophone Media to be open graciously at the sight of his availability. It was during the launch of Galophone Properties on the 1st August 2018. Sanidara holds a master's degree in international journalism from Cardiff University in the United Kingdom. He has rich experience in the field of journalism and politics and he previously worked with BBC, Confederation of African Football amongst many many others. Another revelation was made, Sanidara is a general manager of Xylophone Media. And on that note, I would end today's news. He said, I think it's a great note. He was implicated, I think, implicated not fully. He he still took it. He still took the money. He was implicated in one way or another. And now he has had a chance to work with Xylophone Media as a general manager of Xylophone Media. Wish him all the best. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a, have a great day.